Um, but I do. And where I find my greatest encouragement comes from the Word of God. And I find my greatest encouragement from things that Jesus said. And as Jesus was getting ready to leave, as He's getting ready to leave His disciples, His best friends, as He's getting ready to leave this world, He said this in John chapter 14. He said, Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Everybody say with me, peace, I leave with you. This morning, I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to speak directly to each of us. And for those who have already heard this, I believe He's going to speak to you again. And you can't get enough of this. Um, again, this uh, it was hard for me to decide to do this, but I knew when the Lord spoke. I know the voice of the Lord. I know when He speaks. And I believe that we're all here for a purpose today, and we're all here to receive peace. Young, old, doesn't matter. He's here for us, and it's for us. Heavenly Father, I thank You for Your beautiful Word. And God, as we get into it this morning, I pray that You would challenge us with it. Let it saturate our hearts, and let it cover us. In Jesus' name, Amen. You can be seated. Now, I want to, this is going to date some of you just a little bit. I want to find out from you just, a, again, without any embarrassment or anything like that, how many of you in here were what we would call children of the 60s? What I mean by that is, is you grew up on 60s music and 70s music. Come on, I'll be honest. Who in here grew up on 60s and 70s music? As a, as you were, you were born in, you know, I was born in 69, so I barely got to hear any 60s music, okay? Only on the oldies channels. Alright? Uh, but some, uh, some of you in here, you know what it's like to grow up. There's a, there was a singer and a famous guitar player named Jimi Hendrix. How many of you ever heard of Jimi Hendrix? Alright. Even if you live in, 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 in if, even if you grew up, you know, in my age, you, you've heard of him. You know, now through the, through YouTube and, and, and inter, internet, you can you can watch videos of him, I suppose, and um, so you have all that accessible to you. Jimi Hendrix was an incredible talent, incredibly talented man. Well, Jimi Hendrix in 1970 ended a concert by smashing his guitar on stage. Anybody ever saw that? Saw the video of him doing a smash his guitar, brother Elmer. I was going to take. His get, I was going to take Elmer's guitar and smash it on stage just to kind of show it, but I figured he might walk out. And so, um, and I figured he'd think, oh no, the pastor done lost his mind. I was sitting there thinking, I wonder what Elmer would do if I smashed his guitar. So I didn't want to take a chance. There you are, brother Elmer. I was going to smash your guitar on stage and show him what Jimi Hendrix did, but I didn't do it. I'll have to buy you another. He said he's ready for a new guitar. Now, so he smashed his guitar on stage and the audience, they applauded loudly. I mean, they, they, they gave him an ovation. But then suddenly he stopped. And he fell to his knees. And he remained motionless for some time. He broke the silence and the stillness by asking this question. He says, if you know real peace, I want to visit with you backstage. But apparently no one responded to his plea and his request. Several days later, he died from a drug overdose. Now surely somebody in that concert that heard him cry out and ask how to find real peace, surely somebody knew what it meant to have real peace. Surely there was somebody that knew what it was like to experience peace. You know, if, 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 if Hendrix could have only heard the words... That Jesus spoke. If he had only heard Jesus say, peace, I leave with you. If he'd only heard that, he, if he'd only heard that, he might have experienced the greatest miracle and perhaps he could have been alive today and maybe he'd be playing a guitar in a church somewhere today. If he'd only heard those words, but it, apparently he did not. You see, Jesus spoke these words during the greatest trial of his life. Now you think about what Jesus, he knew what he was about to go through. He knew what he was about to experience. 
But yet he spoke these words, peace I leave with you. In fact, he said, I'm leaving my peace with you. He spoke these words when he knew what he was going through, when he was trying to provide comfort for the ones who were going to be left behind. But who was going to be taking the beating? Who was going to be taking the abuse? Who was going to be taking the pain? He was, but yet he spoke to them and speaking to us saying, I'm leaving you peace. In his pain, in his suffering, in what he knew was going to take place. You know, we, we, we tend to think of peace this way. We think of peace as the absence of something. You know, come on, we're living in a time where there's a lot of war. A lot of poverty. A lot of stress. In fact, we, we live in a time where, where people are worried all the time. Anxiety is that epidemic area in the world right now. It's an epidemic, it seems, that anxiety and anxiousness is there. Some people are worried. What will happen to us if I lose my job? What's going to happen in a violent society or a violent town to me? I have a worry of violence or something coming at me or, 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 or somebody um, robbing me or somebody shooting me or something like that, you know. And, and so people worry about these things. In fact, the word peace, it comes from the Hebrew word shalom, which means well-being. And that's what peace means. In fact, it's a common Jewish greeting. When Jews meet each other, they come up to each other and they say shalom. And they, you know, we make a joke about it or what have you. But what are they saying? They're looking at somebody and say, oh, I hope you have well-being. I hope you're okay. When is the last time that you greeted somebody saying, instead of saying, how are you doing? Saying, I hope you're okay. I want you to be okay. I want you to be well. That's how, that's how they greet each other. It's a common greeting. It means to be whole, to be complete, to have an experience, the best of everything that God has for you. You understand, my friends, we live in a world that is fractured. We live in homes that are fractured. We live in a society that is fractured. And because of that fractured, the, the, the fractured nature of our world, we, 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 we don't understand what it's like to be whole anymore. Which is why people don't have peace. Which is why there's suffering everywhere. The priest, he pronounced the shalom on the people of God in Numbers chapter 6. The Greek word for peace in the New Testament comes from the, it means, comes from the word Irene, which means to bind together. So in the Old Testament, the Hebrew, peace means well-being. In the New Testament, in the Greek, peace means to bind together, to pull things together. What a great thing. Boy, aren't there some peace that families need right now? Families that are broken apart could use some peace, could use some binding together. Relationships that are fractured could use something to bind them together. Who is it? Jesus binds man together with God. Who had been separated by sin. We're bound together. He brings us together in our spirit, in our mind, and in our body. In fact, so that we are complete and we're whole. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, He would give us peace. He said He would give us His peace. There was a woman... She told her friend, she said, all my husband and I do anymore is fight. I've been so upset and stressed out, I've lost 20 pounds. Ever been there? The woman said, her friend said, if it's that bad, why don't you just leave him? I like good advice. The woman said, well, I'd like to lose another 15 pounds first. Know how true that is, but you know, I'm, I guess she was letting the stress help her look better. Jesus said, "Peace, I leave with you." What did Christ leave this world? What did our Lord leave this world, my friends? The first thing here's how we know that He left us peace. The first thing that He did is He left us the finished work of redemption. What should bring us peace more than anything is knowing that we are the finished work of redemption. Peace with God is the real 
key to lasting peace. If only we understand what does it mean to be redeemed. Every single one of us in here came in here with problems and come into this world with a need for redemption. We come into this world with a need to be delivered. We come into this world with sin in us. Every single one of us have sin in our lives. Every person, no matter how good or how bad you are, no matter how, how, how affluent you are or, or no matter how poor you are, no matter how high you are or no matter how low you are, you need redemption. And, 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 and you can't make enough money to pay for it yourself. You can't have enough goods to pay for it yourself. You can't even pay enough in church to get it. Redemption doesn't come from that. Redemption is the finished work of Christ. It's not something He owes us, it's something He gave us. It's something for us. And, and, and when we know that, when we understand that, again, listen, listen to me young people, when you understand that what Jesus did for us, what Jesus, the price He paid, that, that He paid that price so that you could be free. So that you wouldn't be bound up to sin. So you wouldn't be bound up to addiction. So you wouldn't be bound up to this world any longer. So you wouldn't have that bondage in your life. And it's a finished work. It's not a work in progress. It is a finished work. You have to be justified by faith. And you have to have peace. In Isaiah 48, he says, There is no peace for the wicked. For those who are in sin, there is no peace. My friend, if you can't lay your head at bed at night and rest because you're worried about the condition of your soul, you need peace. You need it from the Lord. Well, I I, I remember what it was like when I heard the rapture preached all the time and I wasn't right with the Lord. Hey, we, okay, I want to remind everybody that the Lord's coming soon. And, 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 and if you're not saved, you need to be afraid. You know, I, I, we don't need to sugarcoat it. If you're not saved you, saved, you need to be afraid. But if you're saved, you can lay your head to bed at night and you can have rest. Now, I'm not saying just because you have a sleepless night, it doesn't mean you're not saved. That's not what I'm saying, okay? Everybody has those. Everybody has times where the things of this world can get to them and, and they can stress you out. Anybody ever been stressed? Come on. I've heard people say I'm too blessed to be stressed, but I'm really not. I'm blessed, but I'm not too blessed to be stressed. I get stressed. You get stressed too. Don't look at me that way. Don't look at me like there's something wrong with me. And I get stressed too. You do too. It's a stressful world we live in. But Jesus gave us peace through the blood on His cross. According to, according to Colossians 1 and 20. Religion and trying to earn our way to heaven. You can't earn it. You can't be good enough to earn your way to heaven. It All it does is it produces guilt, fear, Feelings of secure insecurity. Peace comes when we rest in the finished work. When, what did Jesus say in John chapter 19 when he said in verse 30, he said, It is finished. He finished the work of peace. He finished it for you. This is what he meant in Matthew chapter 11 where he says, I will give you rest. Boy, have you ever just letting him take his yoke upon him? Have you ever, have you ever just turned everything over to Him and let Him give you rest? Well, wouldn't it be nice if we did that? You see, this is why I'm saying, this is a day that can encourage you. We come in here with all of our stuff. We come in here with everything. In fact, some of you are coming in to this morning, you've got the baggage of this world on you. You've got the weight of this world on you. You carry it, you, you carry it like a garbage bag. And, and I understand that this morning you have an opportunity to come and lay it down, but don't pick it up and carry it with you. Be freed from it. Allow the peace of God to, that passes all understanding to help you. Another thing He left us, He left us the Holy Spirit. Hmm, I don't know if you... But we, we, we used to when you said that Pentecostal church has shouted. When you said He left us the Holy Spirit, we need to remember He left us the Holy Ghost, my friends. And the Holy Ghost makes the difference. 
I, I, I believe the Holy Ghost will make the difference in your life. I believe the Holy Ghost will make the difference in your family. I believe the Holy Ghost will make the difference in you. We need a fresh move and a fresh wave of the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 14, when Jesus is getting ready to go away, He, sa- he says, I am leaving you a helper. I'm leaving you a comforter. I'm leaving you the Holy Spirit. And my friends, we need the Holy Spirit. And in, in Galatians chapter 5, we find the fruits of the Spirit. And in Romans chapter 5, 14, we find the gifts of the Spirit. And I'm telling you the Holy Spirit is here not just to be here but he is here for us go ahead clap your hands it's all right he's here for us he's here for you he goes on he says my peace everybody say my peace I give you not as the world gives what a beautiful statement you see I could get up, Sister Joanne, and I could say, I'm just going to give you my peace. And that does you no good. Does you absolutely no good. You can get up and you say, hey, Pastor, I'm going to give you my peace. You can have my peace. Zilch. Doesn't help at all. Oh, I feel good that somebody was kind enough to want to offer it to me, but it doesn't do any good. Uh, yeah, we're good people and, and we can help and whatever, but, but, but gee, when Jesus said... Here's what I'm doing. I'm leaving. I'm just going to leave my peace with you. Because I don't have to have it anymore. And I'm leaving it with the church. I'm leaving it with the people of God. And what it is, his peace comes from the authority that he has. Because he was the only man God ever to live. You know, 100% man. 100% God. He's the only one ever to raise himself from the dead. You understand? He's the only one to have that kind of... You know what? He can leave his peace. And knowing that it comes from him, he's what he's leaving us his property and said, I'm giving it to you. I'm leaving it for you. It is an inheritance for you. My friend, hear me. We live in a time where worldly peace is just a substitute for it. Oh, yes. This next year, there's going to be a politician come up and say, you know what? I can solve it all and we won't ever have a war again. Yeah, vote for that one. Vote for that guy because he surely has the answer or she. They surely have the answer because they, when they tell you they can, they'll never have a war again, watch out. Or, 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 or oh yeah, I, I love it. Listen, I, you know, we, we had a presidential candidate, thought he was a good presidential candidate. He said, oh, I'm going to draw the parties together. When does that happen? Huh? That hadn't happened, has it? Have you seen one in the last 40 years that drew the, war, drew, drew the parties together? No, they haven't. No. I've been waiting for the right candidate so I can vote for who would come in and make everything okay. Yes, sir. They tell me they're going to give me more money. They tell me they're going to cut the taxes. Well, somebody ought to have said, bless the Lord on that. They, 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 they tell me that they're going, to, they're going to solve all the world's crisis. But not one of them has done it yet. Why? Because worldly peace doesn't last. Man doesn't have the capacity to do it. You see, this isn't political because what I've discovered is whether they're Democrat or whether they're Republican, they can't solve the problem. Oh, we can go then. Let's go. Okay, the politicians, we know they can't do it. Let me find the doctor that has all the answers. Thank God for doctors. I thank God for good, wonderful doctors. But find the one that has all the answers. I got to visit with Brother Jim yesterday in Little Rock. He's got a team of doctors. I mean, they, I mean, literally a team of doctors that come in. Every single one of them tells him a different thing. And they're doing very best. He's got, he's got an, a top-notch team. I mean, one of the top teams in the country helping him out. But his answer, he knows, still comes from the Lord. When we were ready to lay hands, we, well, listen, we prayed because he knows that his Peace comes from God. Well, thank God. I thank God for good doctors. But, but understand, they don't have the answers, do they? They surely don't. No, they don't. This is nothing against them. Nothing, nothing against anybody in the medical profession or anything like that. We just know that it doesn't, the real lasting stuff doesn't come from man. Peace isn't going, you're at school. Young people at school and, you know, they, every now and again a fight breaks out or something happens. That, I mean, it happens, you know. I remember the last time in my life I was in a fight. It was in eighth grade. 
Guy called me out. I had a fight. I got the daylights beat out of me. <laughs> had an older brother. He stepped in after I got beat up pretty good. He stepped in and whooped the boy. And then he whooped me for getting beat up. <laughs> the other boy didn't mess with me anymore. But, you know, of course, my, like I say, my, my brother whooped him. And then he whooped me. He said, don't ever lose a fight again. I said, okay, I won't fight again. Always then, you know, trying to, but that peace doesn't last either. It doesn't. It really doesn't. In reality, my friends, hear me. Here it is. We live in a world, in Jeremiah, where it says, peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Politicians, they offer the false peace. Since the beginning of recorded history at 3600 B.C., historians estimate that there has only been 292 years of peace on this planet. Less than 300 years without war. 8,000 peace treaties have been made and broken. Now, 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 there are over 100 wars and conflicts in the world. Yet the greatest war awaits, doesn't it? That greatest war is the war that, there, that will decry peace. The war called Armageddon. And again, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly. That's worldly stuff. There is the substitute of peace, of prosperity, pleasure, power, and, subs- and substances. You know, people say, you know what, you want to have peace, you get more money. You want to have peace, you have more power. You want to have peace, you become famous. Now, how's that worked out for the famous people? Right? I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. You take a child actor and, and turn them into some kind of a cult hero and, and look at them. Not, 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 not to talk bad about them, but my goodness, the ones that some of us idolized when they were children. We look at them now. The teenage actors who were teenagers when I was a teenager, some of them have died of drug overdose. Alcoholism. Died in poverty. In the 1970s and 80s series, different strokes. Several of the, uh, uh, all of them but one have died and the other spent many of his years in prison for drugs. But they had fame. They had fortune. Professional athlete who made millions and millions and millions of dollars this week passed out because of drugs in a Las Vegas brothel. They just finally got him awake just yesterday. Finally coming to Lamar Oden, formerly married to one of the Kardashians. But he has all the money he needs. He has all the fame that he needs. But he doesn't have peace. He doesn't have peace. Pleasure isn't going to bring you peace. Power's not going to bring you peace. Well, if I can only be in charge of somebody, it isn't going to bring you peace. Substances will not bring you peace. Hear me, young people. You'll have people come to you at school and they'll, tell, they'll, 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 they'll try to give you drugs or try to give you alcohol and they'll say it'll make you feel better. But you hear me, it will not. And it will not give you peace. Real peace is based on a personal relationship with Jesus. You can't have peace without Him. He is our peace. He is the Prince of Peace. It is in practicing the presence of Jesus in your personal life that it brings peace. When you get in times of prayer and you get in the presence of the Lord, you'll find peace. I don't picture Jesus on the throne at the right hand of God. I understand. I understand where we want to, you know, He's at the right hand of God. But, but don't sit there and picture Him at the right hand of God. Here's, what you, here's the way you need to picture Him is the way David did. In Psalm chapter 16, he says, The Lord is at my right hand. Hmm. What do I mean by that? The Lord is at your right hand. That means when you have Him... You have peace. He's right there with you. He's not just away from us sitting on a throne doing nothing. No, sirree. The thing is, 
because he left his peace, because he went away, he can sit on the throne and be with us at the same time. Oh, I'd like to be like David who understood, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say the Lord is the shepherd of the universe. He didn't say the Lord is the shepherd of the world. He said the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It says covenant with the people. Come to music, please. Then he goes on, he tells us this. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus said, and I have to remind you of this. Now again, we didn't come to church to hear this, but we want to hear the truth, okay? I know we want to come to church and hear people say that everything is always going to be okay, that when you get saved, you're not going to have any troubles or any problems or any trials or anything like that, but that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said in, 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 in John 16, He says, In this world, you will have trouble. So, so I, I want you to understand that. In this world, you will have trouble. In this world, you're going to have trouble. You can't escape it. It's part of this world. It's part of what we're going to have. You know, um, it's it's part of, it's, 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 it's not a part of our DNA, but it's part of the DNA of the world. But while we don't have control over the world around us, you do have control over your own heart. According to Proverbs. We keep letting the fear in. And there's a great saying, fear knocked at the door, faith answered, and there was no one there. Can can I tell you this morning, and here's how we want to get ready in just a few moments to to, to, to leave us so that you can understand that you don't have to live in the worries. Turn your worries over to God. And this is where I wanted to get to. And again, I shared this with them a couple Wednesday nights ago. But I, I want to ask every one of you, to, to, to pay very close attention to me. If you're going to turn yourselves over to the world, you need to do something a little different. What everybody needs in this place today is something that's a little unusual. Something a little different. You need a God box. Everybody say, what's a God box? Go ahead and say, what's a God box? I'm about to tell you what a God box is. I want you to do this. Everybody take your finger, take your index finger, hold it up. Take it, draw a box. All right? Draw a box. Now, here it is. Everybody needs a God box. What do we mean by that? If we want to turn our words over to God in Philippians chapter 4, He tells us that that, that He'll give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. He says, says, be anxious for nothing. What it is, is put your cares and your worries in this God box and leave them there. There are people in situations that you simply cannot control. You've come in here today and there are circumstances that are beyond your control. That this morning, what we're going to ask you to do so you can walk out of here with peace is that you can put your things in the box and say, God, I'm giving it to you. I know what the box is imaginary, but what you're saying is, God, I'm casting my cares on you. Have you ever just said, okay, God, I'm tired of it. I want to just give it to you. That's what putting it in the God box is. That's what it is. We're going to put things in the God box today. And and every one of us has something we need to put in there. No, hear me. Nobody in here has got it so together that they can't use some peace from God. Doesn't mean that we're messed up. Doesn't mean that there's something bad wrong with it. It just means that we're human. I mean, what are the worrying of this world, what's it going to do to help you? What is worrying over things that you can't control going to do to help you? And I know, listen, that when things get out of my control in certain areas of my life, I said, man, I, but in reality, Sister Nell, there's lots of things I just can't control. I can't do it. You put it in the God box and you trust God with the outcome. That's what Jesus did. When you turn something over to God, trust Him to work it out. And stop worrying. God has it for you. I'm going to share with you something very quickly. I, I put this on my Facebook the other day. But I'm going to share with you something. I actually didn't come from a Christian perspective. It came from Duke University. They did a study on peace of mind. And as before we pray, I want to share with you. There are factors that are found to contribute greatly to emotional and mental stability. The first factor that 
that, that deals with that is the absence of suspicion and resentment. That helps you with peace. Listen, my friends, if you're nursing a grudge against somebody, you better get rid of it. You won't have peace of mind if you have something against somebody. You, won't, you can't possibly have peace of mind if you've got something against somebody. It's a major factor in your peace and happiness. Not living in the past will help you have peace. Listen, the more you think about your past, it's going to depress you. When you have an unwholesome preoccupation with old mistakes and failures, it leads to depression. Not wasting time and energy fighting conditions you cannot change. There are some things in this world you can't change. There are some things that you deal with that you can't change. You can't change anybody else's heart or mind. You can't do it. Cooperate with life instead of trying to run away from it. Force yourself to stay involved with the living world. Resist the temptation to withdraw and become reclusive during periods of emotional stress. One of the things that a lot of people do when they start getting stressed out, they cut themselves off. Don't cut yourself off from the world. Don't cut yourself off from the church. He says that you have to be attached to the vine. But he says that if it cuts itself off, it'll die. Not the whole vine. Refuse to indulge in self-pity. When life hands you a raw deal, hey, I've been there. I asked myself a question a couple of years ago. When I got a letter from the IRS that says I was being audited, and I had to sit in front of an IRS auditor for two, two hours because my identity was stolen. Somebody stole my social security number for an illegal immigrant to file taxes on me. But I got audited. They didn't spend any time in jail. Well, you know where the self-pity comes from there? It's a little consolation when, they, when, when he tells you that he believes what you're telling him. He, a little consolation when he tells you that he believes you're honest. When you're the one that has to be patted down before you go in. You can have self-pity about it or you can deal with it and go on. Cultivate the old-fashioned virtues. You know what old-fashioned virtues? Love, humor, compassion, loyalty. Do not expect too much of yourself. Hey, don't live a perfectionist lifestyle that, that you can't possibly live up to. When there's too wide a gap between self-expectation and your ability to meet the goals that you have set, feelings of inadequacy are inevitable. And then find something bigger than yourself to believe in. Boy, isn't there something bigger than us to believe in? I believe in a God that provides peace. I want to ask you to stand to your feet right now. Hear me. I wrestled. I wrestled with this on... Should I do this? Should I preach something that I've already shared on a Wednesday night? But I believe with all my heart it was the right thing. I believe that God wanted every one of you to hear it today. I believe God wanted this to be recorded so it could go out, um, so it could touch people's lives. I, I believe that God wanted to do something with this. But I believe God wants to do something with you in it. With every head bowed, I want to ask you real quick. Who in here say, Pastor... There are some things in my life that I need peace about right now. There are some things in my life that I need some real peace to help me. That, that it's got me nervous. This, world, this world's got me worrying. I've got some things going on in my family. I've got some things going on in my life I can't control. You say, I need peace in it. Would you hold your hand up high? Hold it up. Say, that's me. Hold it up. Hold it up. Could you use God to help you? Today, my friend, I believe God's going to. I believe God's going to help you. Who would say, Pastor, I'm dealing with some stuff that I, I, I can't even explain what I'm dealing with. I can't explain it. I, I, I can't explain why I'm going through some of the things. I, I just know I am. Would you pray for me? Would you hold your hand up? Hey, we can't explain everything. But God can deal with all. 
important. We have to be convinced of that. I'm going to ask every one of you that raised your hands, if you would, make your way to this altar. Would you do that? There's nothing at all to ever be embarrassed about. When it comes time to pray, we want to pray. We want to talk to God. It doesn't matter who you are, what you're dealing with. This is your opportunity to receive from the Lord. But Jesus said, and Jesus made a promise. Jesus made a promise to us. It says, peace I leave with you. I am fully convinced that I don't live my day-to-day life by just being up and down. Because I have ups and I have downs. I have good things and I have bad things. But my commitment to the Lord is rock solid because of the peace that He's left with me. The peace He has for you. Before we pray with these individuals, there's nothing that brings peace more than salvation. More than being right with the Lord. So before we go any farther, we want to pray for anybody that wants to give their heart to the Lord. So I'm going to take the time right now. And I want to share with you, if you admit that you're a sinner, believe that Jesus will die for, that died for you to give you life and confess Him as your Savior and Lord, He will save you. And He'll change you. And He'll give you the peace that you need. I want to ask everyone in this place to pray this prayer with me out loud. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I'm sorry for all my sins. I ask You to come into my heart today. Forgive me. Cleanse me. I accept You as my Savior and as my Lord. I know today that I have peace of mind and peace in my heart because now I am saved. Today, Lord, I start a new journey and a new life with you in the name of Jesus. I know that I know that I know I am saved. If you ask Him to come into your heart, just then lift up your hands and say, that's me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now I want to ask some others to come and help us pray. We're going to begin praying with these. Would you in the pew, would you take be uh, sincere and and pray with these folks? Would you just pray for them? We... we, um, we want to bless them and, and, and we want your prayers. And, and maybe there's something that I didn't cover. I, I, I don't cover everything. But would you just come and, or would you just pray? And if you need something to pray for, we'll, we'll pray for anybody. God will give you peace.